Restoring Illinois to greatness. This is Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute and hosted by AM560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with Joe Kaiser, producer for Illinois Rising on this edition of Illinois Rising. And Joe, you're doing very well. Just hang in there. I, I know I, that I would, main voyage. Above average, slightly above average. I'm shooting for like a 6 out of 10. I mean, that's, you're, you know, it's generous yeah. on your part, but uh, okay. Well, sure, we'll go with that. Uh, you know, your review may say something different, but uh, we still got a segment left. And so here's the thing, the civility of our rhetoric in the wake of this horrific shooting this week in Alexandria, Virginia, the assassination attempt by a man from Belleville, Illinois, against uh, Republican members of Congress, of course, and Steve Scalise, in particular, House Majority Whip, uh, the customary calls for civility and the reviews of the rhetoric and the art forms and the hostility and the toxicity of the political climate and our politics in America. What about here in Illinois and Chicago? It's interesting. It's very quiet and particularly quiet from the Chicago and Springfield press course because uh, apparently they have no institutional memory. That's where we come in. Do you remember these nuggets? Senator Donnie Trotter two years ago saying of Rauner's budget, he he's acting, quote, as if he was an ISIS warrior fighting a battle, not against the state, not against the state of Illinois, but against the people of Illinois. He's an ISIS warrior. Are you, say, are you saying that's too harsh or, or well, untrue? Is, is, is that is that yeah. backed up? Well, yeah. Um, and uh, if you think that was a one off, Chicago Teachers Union President Karen Lewis and when she addressed the city club, that august body, just last year, called Governor Rauner ISIS's new recruit. Um, it seems like, uh, based on that standard, you would say that the shooter from Belleville, who was a Bernie Sanders campaign volunteer, big fan of Rachel Maddow, uh, he, I guess he's a radicalized leftist. And those are the, those ISIS ISIS comparisons are two of the the, the worst um, things that obviously Governor Rauner has been called. I mean that that's absurd. But even beneath that, you hear all the time. Uh, just just last week, Amaya Pawar, who's kind of running for governor, said that he's so cute. Yeah, he's adorable. He's, he's a little he older. Think, than yeah, he. uh, he, he's yeah, he's <laughs> darling. He he called Governor Rauner blatantly, and he's done this over and over again. Called him a racist. I mean, the, the, and that's not to the level of ISIS, but you're trying to use this rhetoric to intensify your supporters and it's always just outlandish just these attacks that they're just throwing against the wall to see what sticks that oftentimes if we're calling for civility these don't really muster up to that standard well right and 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 but you so the combination i mean i'm not holding uh the insiders legally culpable but in terms of influence if you have the standing if you're the president of a thirty thousand person teachers union or if you're a state senator you have some standing you have some supporters you have people that listen to you whether they should or not they do and so thinking about uh when members of congress come home right i mean we've seen all the protests out uh in chicago in front of trump tower about president trump and they're going after members of congress too chasing you know the resistance is chasing them around where they can and so um you know, I mean, is there a conversation to be had or do we just do kind of the pro forma appeals to civility and unity for about 72 hours? And then we forget about what happened at that baseball field in Alexandria and we just return to the uh, the, the, the political climate that uh, newspaper editors are wringing their hands over right now. And then they join in the club. 72 hours from now well here's the unfortunate thing is all the calls for civility right now kind of mirror the calls for civility under president obama in 2011 when gabby giffords was shot in tucson arizona the, the, there's kind of and, a deja, deja vu thing there and david axelrod professional liar david axelrod uh former chicago tribune reporter for five minutes uh and political flack for his entire uh, career that's how he became professional liar according to mike Reiko. uh he uh Still not ruling out the Tea Party in terms of responsibility. Brian Ross, the Aurora shooter, not ruling out the Tea Party. I mean, this is where they go right away to try and uh, identify political affiliation and incitement where none existed. And it turned out in Arizona, because the New York Times opined on it this week as well, 
Oh, that was a clear, clear political incitement was the case of uh, Jared Lochner in Arizona shooting Gabby Giffords and those around her. Um, was it? And they blame Sarah Palin uh, because of the website she had with targeted districts, including Giffords, for electoral victories. Turns out uh, Lochner ne- never visited that site, so didn't know about it. And also his favorite books were The Communist Manifesto and Mein Kampf. So tell me again, New York Times editorial board, how that's connected to political incitement from conservatives. It's the opposite. So if it, anything, and it was written in his case, it's nothing. It's not the same standard. They're not drawing the right dots. But if we're going to say that we care about civility after these instances happen, let's care about civility before people get shot. Right. You're, you're using the examples here in Illinois. Let's talk about those now. Just because no one got shot doesn't mean we shouldn't have the conversation about civility if we actually care about civility. <laughs>